Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick uh, video review to accompany my written review on my Voxelab Polaris. Uh, I've been using it for a few days now. I've learned a lot. I absolutely love this machine, so I wanted to do a quick uh, overview of the machine and uh, accompany my uh, written review with uh, some of the tips and tricks and things I've learned already about the uh, about the Polaris. So for starters, um, I have to keep my video to 10 minutes long. Amazon only lets me upload a 10 minute video, so I'll do a, f a full unboxing and a more detailed review on my YouTube channel. Um, but for now, I just wanted to do a, a quick overview. So the machine itself is fantastic. Um, when I purchased it, it was it's still $178. Um, for that price point, this is an absolutely amazing machine. This is my first resin printer. Um, you can see I do have a, a Snapmaker A350. So I'm familiar with 3D printing, but this is my first uh, foray into resin printing. And uh, this has been an absolutely uh, delightful experience with this Voxlab printer. Um, I absolutely love the build quality. Uh, first thing you notice, it's heavy. When you take it out of the package, it's packaged well. Um, everything, all the tolerances are tight. Everything's machined well. Um, everything fits together nice and smooth with no wiggle or jiggle. And everything's uh, very precision uh, machined. It fits together nicely. Um, I'm very impressed with the uh, LCD screen that you get and the interface. Uh, it shows you the uh, time remaining, it shows you the elapsed time, it shows you what layer you're on, and then it gives you an actual display, um, those little shapes that you see flashing on the screen right there. Those are actually what the LCD screen is flashing onto the build plate, uh, and that build plate uh, is what the resin cures to, and it peels up, or it goes up puts new resin underneath it, sinks back down, presses it against the plate, and then reflashes it to cure the resin. So it actually gives you a preview of layer by layer what it's doing, and then it shows you the overall progress. Um, a couple things I'll mention. Make sure you print, uh, level the build plate really well. Uh, there are directions on that in the quick start guide, but make sure you follow the quick start guide. Even more important than the quick start guide, um, this is slightly misleading and it's not fully encompassing. There's a copy of this quick start guide in a PDF version on the USB stick. My first uh, advice is take, spend some time looking on this USB stick. They put uh, software as well as some other really helpful files, but they don't reference it anywhere else in any of the manual, so you kind of have to know to look for it on the USB stick. And what I mean is when you go to the USB stick, on it there's a note, a note file, and that note file has a link to this website and it's a Dropbox folder, or a Dropbox uh, website, and inside that Dropbox is some really helpful videos that show you how to level the, the build plate, a copy of the quick start guide, how to remove an object, um, replacing your screen, or your, uh, your film, which I'll reference here in a second, and then how to operate the slicing software. It also gives you a copy of the um, Chitu box. Um, Chitu box is the slicer software that you'll actually use to upload an STL file. Um, there's two sample files, an STL of a deer, uh, which is this, and then there's a sample file of a nozzle, uh, and I'll get to that in a second. But um, you do get a copy of the Chitubox software. This is an open source software that anybody can use and anybody can download. Um, the version that you get on the USB stick is not updated, so make sure you go to uh, help and check for updates and update to the newest version of Tattoo Box. Um, Tattoo Box seems like it's a lot more thorough and a lot more all-encompassing and there's a lot more um, options for you. Uh, you, can, you can tweak stuff, you can play with stuff a whole lot more and you've got a lot more functionality. It seems like it has a steeper learning curve because there is so many things you can do with it. Um, but then another thing that I found out when I looked back at the Amazon review page or the Amazon uh, store uh, front I saw that there was a voxel print, but I didn't see don't get a copy of it on the USB stick. Um, but I found that if you go to Voxel um, Vox Labs website, this is their main website, it's very well done, but then go to support download center. I'll turn off this light, make it a little bit easier. Um, there is actually a copy of voxel print slicing software. So you're gonna want to download that. And this one's just a lot more user friendly. Uh, the voxel print software does not have anywhere near as many functions as the Chitu box. Um, it seems like it's a lot more um, simple and a lot more direct. 
you can't tweak as much, but it seems like a lot of the built-in um, functionality and features are, are just fine. Uh, now, I wanted to get to a few um, notes real quick um, that I found out while, while working with these things. Um, one thing is make sure you attach the build plate properly. Watch that video that you get in that uh, Dropbox folder um, and follow those instructions to attach the build plate properly. If you can hear this, I don't know if you heard that peeling sound, but that peeling sound is a good thing. That means my build plate was level and it means that the resin is sticking really well after it cures and it actually has to peel the cured resin off the bottom of the plate. If your plate's not level, you probably won't hear that sound um, and you'll have problems with your print. So make sure you follow the directions to level your build plate properly. Um, also, uh, I noticed as I was throwing everything away for the packaging, um, this thing is very well packaged. When it arrives, everything has plastic film all over it to protect it, um, which is fantastic. However, um, you do get a bonus, let's see if I can find it, I think it's in here. You get a bonus film. This is the film that's sticking to the bottom of the resin container, and it's it's just simply sitting in there um, underneath the resin box. Mm -hmm. So as I was peeling all the film off of everything and throwing it all away, I had this sitting in the trash pile. But this is actually a replacement film. You notice the holes in it. You can actually use this when your film wears out to replace the one that's on the bottom of the resin box. They don't reference this anywhere in the manual or any of the information that are documentation that I've seen. This isn't referenced anywhere. So make sure you don't throw this out. This is actually a really valuable piece um, or valuable thing uh, for if you puncture your, your resin um, box because it's really thin. It's, it's a thin membrane. It's flimsy plastic. So I can see it wearing out and I can see it eventually getting a hole in it or, uh, or a puncture. So make sure you save that. They don't reference it anywhere. Um, I also got, uh, I wanted to note that you don't get any resin with the printer itself, so make sure you buy some of that. I wanted to get the two Vox Labs uh, resins because I knew that they were compatible with this machine. Um, I got the regular standard gray, uh, which you actually use uh, acetone or, um, I'm sorry, not acetone, uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean up. But I also got the water soluble one, and that's what's printing now. Um, not sure how that one works yet, but I'm very, very happy with the gray. Uh, this was one of the sample prints that you get, and I actually printed this with this gray. And I don't even know if my camera will capture the just amazing detail of this thing. Uh, everyone said that uh, resin prints are great for printing miniatures, or resin printers are great for printing miniatures um, because of the detail level, and this detail is like nothing I could ever achieve with my uh, with my filament printers, my plastic uh, filament printers. It's just an, an unreal level of detail. I can't even focus to get it, um, get it close enough to show you how awesome it is. But super happy with this. Um, that's the gray, turned out great. Uh, the white is currently printing right now. And I used um, this other sample file. This is one that you get. It's called a nozzle, that's what they call it. But it's actually more like a funnel and it clips onto the side of the tray to let you pour the resin out easier. Um, so I'm definitely excited about printing that because I did try dumping this resin into the container and I used the strainer, I, I, I ran it through the strainer, um, but it was still messy, it was dripping down. Even though there's a little spout down there, it was dribbling down the side and it was kind of making a mess. So I'm excited about printing this funnel. Um, I'm sure that'll help. So um, I'm running out of time. Um, I gotta keep this under 10 minutes, but um, Definitely get yourself some funnels. Um, I also wanted to show you, the good thing is to get a set of gloves. The ones that they give, uh, you do get a set of gloves, but they're, they're real thin latex. They're garbage, they're throwaways, they instantly tore on me and they were too small for me. Get you a pair of good gloves, you're not supposed to touch the resin, so make sure you get some gloves. Also, isopropyl alcohol is the preferred method of cleaning with this, with this gray. Really hard to find this during a pandemic, so I did find out that you can use denatured alcohol and that's been working just fine. So just some things to keep in mind. Um, again, I'll give a more thorough review in my uh, in my YouTube channel, but hope you guys enjoy the Voxlab Polaris. It's a fantastic machine.